Hello and welcome to an Eternium video with a bit of a difference. This is more looking at a question that's actually a very good question on the forums. Um, so uh, this forum user wants to know about how Immolate impacts the damage output and what the skill rotation should be, the best way of maximising that. Um, so is it a universal debuff? Um, should it be Nova Immolate Beam Nova or Nova Beam Immolate Nova? So they're looking at uh, should, where do you want to apply this 45% more damage? Do you want it on the Frost Beam phase or on the Frost Nova phase? Um, so when we're doing our Frost Beam damage or when we're doing Thermal Shock? Um, and in answer to the last part, uh, no, it's not just 45% more damage from Immolate, it is 45% more damage from all attacks for enemies that are impacted by Immolate. Um, what I'll do is jump into the training grounds quickly and show you how that can be tested, because there's quite a few pitfalls that could end up skewing your results and coming to a wrong conclusion, and then we shall come back to answer the question. Okay, so here we are in game. I'm going to jump into training grounds and I'll pick single enemy damage training. Uh, the reason I'm going with single enemy is if we've got multiple enemies, if I do something with frost beam and I hit all four in one test and then I hit only three or two in the next, then it's going to give us different damage results, which isn't very helpful. Um, number of pitfalls with training ground testing, you need to try and eliminate as many of those as possible. Um, so we don't want uh, our talisman of power if this procs during the test, then suddenly our damage will go way up. So we should remove that. Um, ideally, when you're testing in training grounds you're going with fire lily so that you remove any chance of random critical hits skewing your results um, as well so that will give us a flat damage um, now i do need the weapons in this case because we are testing for thermal shock damage and that requires both weapons the glacis and igneous applied um, now level 77s as I have here have quite a large damage range which isn't going to help with test results so what I've done is go and craft a couple of level 1 so uh, get our damage as flat as possible for the testing here um, let's make sure we don't have anything that can randomly increase our damage output on our abilities so power infusion go away we don't want to suddenly randomly increase our damage by 40 percent for six seconds uh, so hopefully we've got a build that we can use to run a test uh, so we've got our frost bolt which we need for northern winds so we can have our shatters working uh, we need immolate frost nova and frost beam so we can get shatters and thermal shocks going um, I could remove these skills, they're not actually going to change the results, so I'm happy with leaving them in place. Um, one other thing that we need to bear in mind as we go through, in order to get the full rotation in properly, we probably want this six piece bonus from the armor, so frost and fire skills have their base cooldown reduced by three seconds. Um, it does give us a problem with the four piece bonus casting frost or fire spell gives up to five charges of elemental fury and elemental fury will increase our damage by eight percent so if we get more charges of elemental fury during one test we do more damage so uh, between tests probably need to make sure that elemental fury is not uh, already stacked on us uh, and the final issue is that when we receive damage, there's a chance of freezing the attacker. And with Frost Beam, 
we do double damage to frozen targets. Now we will be hitting them with Frost Nova anyway, so hopefully they're frozen, but uh, something to bear in mind that we could freeze a target in one test and it not be frozen in another. So I've got the skeleton highlighted so we can see its frozen status, which is not frozen, it's frozen now. Um, I'm just going to frost beam it a few times just to get an idea of how much damage it's doing. Nine million. This should be lower because it's not frozen this time. Five million. So you see it's a significant change in the damage. Frozen again. Run one. It's not frozen. I've got some frozen in there. So it's bouncing around quite a bit. So we're not going to be able to get a consistent answer here unless we're guaranteed frozen. So somewhere between five and nine million is what we're looking for. I shall reset that. Um, what have we got going on up here? It's just our ability rate, that's not a problem. What I'll try and do is make sure that uh, his crowd control immunity isn't active so that the Frost Nova that's going to be the first hit in both rotations will guarantee that the enemy is frozen. So, first rotation, Frost Nova, Frost Beam, uh, sorry, Frost Nova, Immolate, Frost Beam, Frost Nova. Um, I'm actually going to do that just to get that bar killed and then we can run the test and we don't have anything in play up here so here goes Nova Immolate Frost Beam and Frost Nova so we got 22 million thermal shock and 20 million from our Frost Beam we'll reset the test we'll do that same one again just see if we get a similar results much higher reset and we shall go with that ah, did I not let this cool down because that has gone very high let's wait for that to hit zero Okay, so Nova, Immolate, Frost Beam, Nova, back down to 20 and 22, reset that, let this all cool down. And run it one last time before we try the other. Let's wait for this to break bar its way down because we can't freeze it. Okay. So 22 thermal shock, 20 frost beam approximately seems to be about normal for the Nova Immolate Frost Beam Nova, which is the, what I believe should be our strongest uh, combination. So once we've got this immunity reset, we should do the next rotation, which is Nova Frost Beam Immolate Nova. Uh, Nova Frost Beam Immolate Nova. And as you can see, it's a lot lower by quite some way. Uh, we shall reset that and run it a few more times just to make sure. Let Elemental Fury run out. Uh, 
so here we go again. Similar results, this is good. And we'll do it a third time just to make sure that we've got three lots of similar results for both and then hopefully we can come out and try and explain what's going on uh, so let's Nova Frostbeam emulate Nova and again nice consistent results that's what we want to see so let's get out of here and have a little chat about what was going on I've decided let's stay in the training grounds just to explain why the first rotation did more damage um, because we're able to sort of see it on the screen um, and the reason for it is when we do frost nova immolate frost beam frost nova immolate is active for the whole of our frost beam and it's just active still when we hit frost nova at the end so we're increasing our damage of our frost beam and of our thermal shock whereas in the other combination we don't set up the 45% uh, extra damage until we're ready to do thermal shocks so we're losing a lot of damage on our frost beam and the amount of fire damage that we do from that so we end up with a much smaller thermal shock and much lower uh, frost beam damage overall as well um, let's let that break down and we'll just demonstrate that first one again just to show it so with our frost beam emulate frost nova we'll see that this is still active at the time that we got that last hit in uh, it's only for a fraction of a second but it's uh, very important that we get that in um, in the real world out in trials you might not do a full channel of frost beam so again it's more important that you've got that uh, immolate out early um, so that whatever amount of channel of frost beam you do you've maximized your damage from frost beam you're maximizing the burning damage from it and your frost nova is going to um, <coughs> do thermal shock whilst this is definitely active if you've got a full beam going on then you're trying to hit frost nova the second you're ready uh, your beams finished you want to hit that frost nova as quickly as possible to get the thermal shock out um, and the other thing to bear in mind is the mob phase so the that isn't the the full rotation of just doing uh, nova immolate frost beam nova uh, we've got all these vortexes as well if we had 50 enemies in front of us um, we would do frost nova immolate uh, if you're on mobile you'll then vortex frost beam and uh, frost nova and if you're on pc you will do your frost beam and then vortex all the enemies into your immolate uh, while still beaming so you're maximizing the damage on a whole group of enemies as you go along um, should we do one last run of that just to see it in action yet again so we should find that that is still active for a fraction of a second as we cast there so again we're getting very consistent results that uh, it does more damage with the original rotation that I thought was correct some years ago um, I shall write that up onto the forum in any case but it's here um, as well as how you can do testing and some of the pitfalls uh, that you need to bear in mind when you are testing in a training ground especially on uh, ELR um, any questions or comments feel free to put them down below and thank you very much for watching